He used often to say there was only one road, that it was like a great river, its springs were at every doorstep, and every path was its tributary. It's a dangerous business, Frodo, going out of your door, he used to say. You step into the road, and if you don't keep your feet, there's no knowing where you might be swept off to. Hey guys, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle Earth. Today I wanted to make a brief video in response to a question that I'm always asked. Which order should I read Tolkien's books in? That is a very great question, and in a legendarium as large as this one, it is definitely difficult to know where to start. So we'll talk about it today. Thank you all for joining me, let's begin our tale. In my opinion, the best place to start and to begin understanding Tolkien's unique way of writing is with The Hobbit. This is the first novel that was published in the legendarium, and it is a rather straightforward tale. It will introduce a person to Middle-earth, its important characters and locations, and the archetypes of Tolkien's fantasy without being too overwhelming of an adventure. Then naturally, after The Hobbit, I would move into The Lord of the Rings. The Fellowship of the Ring will continue much of what The Hobbit already established. The Hobbits, The Shire, Gandalf, Rivendell, and other parts of the story are within both tales. The Lord of the Rings contains six books, two in each novel. Each tells a different part of The War of the Ring and the adventure therein. As it is a trilogy of novels, it perfectly transitions into the Two Towers, where you follow the quest of the Ring and the new characters that you were introduced to in the Fellowship of the Ring. Finally, I would finish reading the main saga about the One Ring in The Return of the King and its appendices. That way all of the characters that began in The Hobbit or afterwards and ended in The Return of the King will have had their stories told. I would finish with the appendices before moving on, as the Aragorn and Arwen tale, Durin's folk piece, and others make for really good reads that build the world. The Hobbit through The Lord of the Rings is rather straightforward. These novels are cohesive and well-known, and honestly many people stop there, but us Tolkien fans don't. After The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, I would read The Silmarillion, as it provides worldly context to the Legendarium and all of its elements. This book and the next books we talk about were all compiled and published by Christopher Tolkien, so we have him to thank for releasing his father's material. Many people think that The Silmarillion is just the encyclopedia or notes of Tolkien, but it is much more of a coherent read than people think. While the stories do jump around in time and place, they generally make sense at the end of each chapter. Each chapter tells a tale or follows a few particular characters or places before moving on. There are multiple tales within the Silmarillion, such as the Quenta Silmarillion, the Ainu Lindel, the Vala Quinta, the Akalabeth, and Of the Rings of Power, and the Third Age, and I would recommend reading them all. And although these events do take place before The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, I would read them after, as the writing and stories are far more complex and abstract in The Silmarillion than they are in the aforementioned stories. After The Silmarillion is where it gets kind of tricky. There are many of Tolkien's notes that are compiled into books. I would start with the great tales in this order, Baron and Luthien, The Children of Hurin, and The Fall of Gondolin. These outline the three major tales of The Silmarillion and go into more depth concerning them. And that order seems to be the most chronologically accurate according to the Legendarium. After these, I would recommend reading The Unfinished Tales. These outline some of the more scattered and unfinished stories of Tolkien's works, such as the origins of the wizards, the founding of Rohan, and its friendship with Gondor and other pieces of the Legendarium that provide context for the world of Middle-earth. Then I would delve into the history of Middle-earth. This is a 12-volume series of books that detail and depict Tolkien's conceptualization of his works. These books show the world-building and the ideas that went into creating Middle-earth, and they also help realize the idea of the frame narrative of Tolkien's works. The books in this series are The Book of Lost Tales Parts 1 and 2, The Lays of Beleriand, The Shaping of Middle-earth, The Lost Road and Other Writings, The Return of the Shadow, The Treason of Isengard, The War of the Ring, Sauron Defeated, Morgoth's Ring, The War of the Jewels, and The Peoples of Middle-earth. Sauron Defeated also has a smaller version, omitting the material that is not related to the Lord of the Rings, and it is called The End of the Third Age. Also, the letters of J.R.R. Tolkien provide much context to Tolkien's thoughts as he wrote The Legendarium. And after all of this, I would recommend reading Tolkien's poems, finding his illustrations and those of other artists that relate to Middle-earth, and reading or listening to the examinations of his works. The Adventures of Tom Bombadil and Bilbo's Last Song include some such poems that are not included in Tolkien's other works. J.R.R. Tolkien, artist and illustrator, shows some of his art, while there are also many books that include art from John Howe, Alan Lee, Ted Nasmith, and others. These pieces of art have shaped much of how we see Middle-earth today. Finally, The History of the Hobbit by John Ratliff analyzes The Hobbit, and people such as Professor Michael Drought have analyzed much of Tolkien's works. There are honestly many examinations of his works that you may find out there. 
But I shall not call this the end. There is so much detail in Tolkien's works that one may spend a whole lifetime reading his books or even making videos about them, and they might still miss or mistake some of the details in his world. Thus, one can definitely reread the Legendarium and be entertained every time. Tolkien's Legendarium is incredible and vast, and one may read all of his tales for a lifetime and still enjoy themselves each time they read In a Hole in the Ground There Lived a Hobbit. From Tolkien's many tales, we see just how many adventures of joy, sorrow, love, and courage there are in his works. Middle-earth will always be there for us to escape to. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts about this book order? Do you agree with it, or would you change it? Let me know in the comments below, and please leave any questions, thoughts, corrections, and additions below as well. Also, please be sure to check out our music channel, Facebook, Twitter, Merch, and Patreon for a Discord server and upcoming podcast in the description below. Finally, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today, and I'll see you all again this Wednesday, May 22nd at 2pm Eastern Standard Time for our next livestream. My friend Royan from Patreon will also be joining us as well. Furthermore, that night we will also be recording our next podcast, and we will be doing a Lord of the Rings online session with our patrons, so please consider joining us there. I will be taking next Sunday off so I can see my friends graduate and make it to their grad parties, but I will leave a poll up on my community tab for my next video coming June 2nd, so please leave a vote for what you would like to see. As always, thank you all so much for watching and for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my great friends.